not say a bad thing about them again, and they will have done their job. They will have done a proper job. In fact, if they endorse me, they will have the easiest labor leadership job anywhere in the country. They just have to sit back and watch as our auto industry reignites and booms. That's what's good. They don't even have Right? I mean, how can they, end, how can they go with this guy? Can't find his way off the stage. I'm looking at these, you know, I always sort of look at stages now, I get a little, because I say, you know, how the hell do you not find your way? So every once in a while, I'll be in the middle of the speech, I'll look, stairs there, stairs there. And I say, how the hell does it work that you can't find your way off a stage? How does that work? But he can't. Joe Biden is surrendering our auto industry to China, just like he surrendered our borders to the cartels, and he surrendered Afghanistan in the most embarrassing week, day, time period in the history of our country. He surrendered to the Taliban, took the military out first. You don't take the military, you take the military out last. So tell your UAW leadership, no problems with them, but they have to endorse Trump, because if they don't, all they're doing is committing suicide. And honestly, you don't want that to happen, because it's they're committing suicide on the back of your jobs, and you can't let that happen. The Democrats, as they wave the white flag of surrender over your future to other foreign countries, you can't have it done. So if you could speak to Sean, he's listening right now, I'm sure. Sean, endorse Trump, and you can take a nice two-month vacation, come back, and you guys are going to be better than you ever were. You don't even have to work. Because the other way, you won't have a vacation, Sean. And in a short period of time, you're not going to have a union. You're not going to have jobs. You're not going to have anything. You have the strongest you've ever had. You're going to do great. You're going to do great. And it's so easy. It's common sense. Again, it's common sense. But unlike them, I will never surrender. I'll never surrender for you. And the American worker never surrenders either. Never. But you need leadership. You know, it's nice to say you never surrender, but you need direction and you need leadership. Crooked Joe puts China first, Mexico first, Ukraine first, Europe first, Asia first, illegal aliens first, environmental lunatics first, puts everyone else first. But he puts America last, he puts our workers last, he puts the UAW last. He puts our industries last. He puts your families last. He puts everything. He does put your children last, yeah. When you think of it, he probably they should be at the top of your list. Thank you very much. I'm going to use that. Do you mind if I use that from now on? Who said that? That was very good. He puts your children last. That's going at the top of my list. He puts everything that's good last. Mine is slightly different. I put America first every single time. So let me say to every UAW member and skilled workers all across our nation, Joe Biden, the Democrat Party, and their political cronies, cease to serve your interests a long time ago. They don't care about you. I mean, he came here yesterday. What did he have? Nine people, right? Nine. We have 9,000 people outside. He said he All right, uh, this is Andrew Kraft here. We are at the top of the hour. Just wanted to check in with some of our viewers here. You are watching former President Donald Trump right now. He's been speaking for about 45 minutes there in the Detroit area uh, to many of his supporters, some of whom are UAW workers there who have been on the picket line. So just wanted to reset at the top of the hour. We're going to continue with this live coverage of former President Trump's remarks. Let's keep watching. ...that you've never even heard of. And just like you're fighting for your rights and your American dream, I'm fighting for my rights and fighting for my freedom against the coordinated, corrupt, very politicized forces of evil. I've never seen anything like it. It's weaponized justice. We have a weaponized justice system. I want to indict! Think of this, I want to indict my political opponent. He's beating me, we got to indict him. 
I think, you know, that works two ways, because when the next one gets in, let's hope that's me. And I'm sure I'd never do a thing like that. I wouldn't do it. I would not do it. But you have an opponent, and you say, let's indict him. And because people know me so well, we know each other very well, my ratings and my approval numbers went up. I'm the only person that ever got indicted where my numbers went up. It's so weird. That's because you know me. I didn't take a salary. I worked my ass off. And we did a phenomenal job. We did a phenomenal job for this country. But for the first time ever, I never thought they indict their political opponent. And what that does is it sets off a, a chain of events that's very dangerous in future years. It could happen to them very easily. The reason Crooked Joe and his thugs are trying so hard to stop me is that in my first term, I disrupted all of it. Oh, did I disrupt? Was that? That was called major disruption. And in my second term, which we're sort of having now, but I don't want the results, right? I don't want the results of this second term. This second term is a disaster for this country. Worst president, think of it, there's never been a president like this. I say that you could take the five worst presidents in history, add them up, and he's done a worse job than all of them added up, but now I'm changing it. I think I can make it to 10, because nobody, you look at our border, you look at everything, you look at our woke military. I defeated ISIS, our military was so great, I rebuilt it. But you look at what's happening in this country, it's horrible. But in my second term, we'll finish the job and we'll get rid of the cheaters, the liars, the scammers, and the criminals. They'll lose their grip on power once and for all. So if you want to save your livelihoods and your way of life, then you need to send a message and join the ultimate strike against the globalist class by casting your vote for a gentleman known as Donald J. Trump in the most important election of our lifetime. I believe this will be the most important election in our lifetime. You know, I used to say that in 2016, and I totally meant it. This blows it away. We're, we're going to lose our country. We're going to lose. We've got probably 15 to 18 million people, the real number, pouring into our country. We have a disaster in Ukraine that would have never happened. We have a potential disaster with Taiwan, China, that would have never happened if it happens. But boy, they are circling, I'll tell you. They want it so badly. And they saw what happened in Afghanistan. They saw what happened with the Taliban. And they say the people they have there now are grossly incompetent. Putin would have never done it. President Xi would have never done it with me. We talked about things, a lot of things. They would have never done it. They wouldn't have done it for another reason also. In the case of Russia, the oil prices would have been so low that they wouldn't have been able to afford it because you would have had $40 a barrel oil. And at $40, he could not have prosecuted the war. But at $115, he made a fortune and makes a fortune with the war. It's up there again now. I don't know if you've been watching. It's getting up there again now. So give me four more years and I will give you the end to this horrible globalism that's killing our country. I'll give you the return of the United States of America as the greatest and strongest industrial nation in the history of the world. Together we will dismantle the corrupt power structure that has feasted on the suffering of the American auto worker and the Workers of any kind, not just auto workers, workers of any kind. We will cast from power the financial forces that have turned American cities into ghost towns to build skyscrapers in Beijing, China. We will wield every lever of government to defend you and to hold accountable those who have profited from the betrayal and suffering of the American factory workers. So sad to see. As your 47th President of the United States, I will be your protector, I will be your advocate, and I will be your greatest champion, the greatest champion that you've ever had. On day one, I will terminate Joe Biden's electric vehicle mandate, and I will cancel every job-killing regulation that is crushing American auto workers. I will unleash a thing called American energy, stop the ban on the internal combustion engine, 
And we will drill, baby, drill, and we will make zero environmental difference. It will have zero environmental difference, zero. In fact, if anything, it's probably cleaner than what they're doing. But it will save your family a yearly fortune and give you a much better way of life. You're losing your way of life. I will then go to every foreign country where we're paying billions and billions of dollars for their military defense, as I was doing before, and tell them that if they do not massively increase their purchases of Ford, Chevys, GMs, and Jeeps, our troops are packing up and we're coming home. You got to buy our products. You got to buy our products. And that's going to be the least of it. And if we can afford to send hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine, then we can afford to have an auto industry that pays our workers a good living wage and keeps our workers working. Having a vibrant car industry is far more important than almost anything we can do for a very important thing called national security. We need a rebirth of loyalty in this country to that end. We will bring back a very beautiful word, protection, financial protection. You're going to be protected financially while we still have the power to do it, you know? There's a run on our currency. They want to take away our currency standards. If that happens, that's the worst thing to happen maybe in our country's history. It will put us in a much different position. But take a look at what's happening. Countries are leaving our standard. In reality, protectionism never truly went out of fashion. Our corrupt politicians just stopped protecting American jobs and workers, and they started protecting the jobs and workers in China and Mexico, Germany, South Korea, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam, many other countries, too. Under the Trump presidency, patriotic protectionism will be the new American way. We want to be protected. That's what we have our government for. We want protection in many ways. And we're going to stop the crime in our cities, and we're going to stop the crime in our country. And we're not going to be nice about it. We're not going to be nice about it. That means protecting our workers, protecting our wages, protecting our jobs, protecting our industries, protecting our communities, and protecting our great — something you don't hear about very much anymore — a great American dream. We had an American dream. You don't hear about that with this guy. This guy walks up yesterday, looks like he's going to fall over standing in front of some people. Looks like he's going to fall over. This is not a leader. The whole world is laughing at us. They respected your leader. Whether you like your leader or not, they respected your leader. They said, we're not going to mess. We're not going to mess. Upon taking office, I will impose an across-the-board tariff on foreign-made goods. I will also pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. That means that if China or any other country makes us pay a 100 or 200 or 300 percent tariff or tax, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100, 200, or 300 percent. What could be more fair? Right? What could be more fair? I will revoke China's most favored nation. Can you believe they have a most favored nation status? Because they say we are a developing nation. Well, we're a developing nation, too. When you look at our cities, we're developing. We're developing in the wrong way. They are doing the worst job. Democrat mayors, Democrat governors, and we will impose stiff penalties on China and other trade abusers. Foreign auto parts manufacturing will be among our first targets. We're going to bring it home from China and other foreign countries on a very grand scale. That's you, McGee. All right? That's you. And because we want all Americans to win and win big from these policies, we will insist that as tariffs on foreign countries go up, because they tariff us crazily, and then we have these stupid people, some congressmen, some senators, that say, no, sir, we shouldn't tariff them, but they're tariffing us. It doesn't matter, sir, it's free trade. I say, is this guy okay? But when those foreign countries tariff us, taxes on American workers, which is really what it is, small businesses and middle-class families, we will be doing the same to them, and you will watch things happen that you won't even believe. For one thing, you're going to bring back jobs at levels. You know, China, they put a big tax on us when we sell a car, a truck, or anything. 
And they say to the American companies, we don't want your trucks from America. Come over and build a plant over here. So they're building plants all over China. How stupid is it? We should do the same thing. And we started doing the same thing, and we were doing the same thing. I gave you the largest tax cut in the history of our country, larger than the Reagan tax cut. And we'll do it again. We'll deliver tax cuts, the likes of which you've never seen before. You will do better, make more money, and have a more secure job than you've ever had before. Best of all, they will be fully paid for by outsourcers and foreign producers who will be paying trillions and trillions of dollars into our Treasury for the privilege of doing business in the United States of America. Isn't that nice? Want to get rid of a big portion of our deficit, too. We're going to tariff and tax them, and you, the American worker, will be the primary beneficiary. And in conclusion, I don't need to tell anyone in this room what the globalists and trade abusers did to the people of Michigan. You've seen the lives wrecked. You've seen your family destroyed. In many cases, the families have been shattered and the communities battered, brutalized, destroyed economically and by crime. But my message to you tonight is that Michigan's abuse under Joe Biden will end, and I will take you to new heights never dreamed of before, never even dreamed of. The Wall Street predators, the Chinese cheaters, and the corrupt politicians have hurt you. I will make you better. Very simple. I will make you better. For years, foreign nations have looted and plundered your hopes, your dreams, and your heritage, and now they're going to pay for what they have stolen and what they have done to you, my friends. We're going to do it together. We're going to take their money. We're going to take their factories. We're going to rebuild the industrial bedrock of this country like it used to be many, many decades ago. By the time this battle is over, the rusted out factories will not be here in Michigan. They'll be in Beijing, Shanghai, and other parts of the world. Taking it back. We're taking it back. And it won't be hard. The gleaming new buildings and roaring production lines will be built in Lansing and Flint and Sterling Heights and Grand Rapids and Pontiac, Dearborn and Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been preparing my entire life for this battle. We did such a great job four years ago. We were unfairly interrupted. Let's be nice about it. We were very unfairly interrupted, but in many ways this is better because we've seen what a bad job they have shown us, what a horrible job they do. And we'll be able to do things that nobody would have thought possible. And people won't be complaining even a little bit because between crime and all of the jobs that have been stolen from us and all of the factories that have been closing, all of the bad things that have been happening with Afghanistan and with Ukraine and with everything, people will say, wow, we want these changes to be made. We want these changes to be, be made very, very quickly. Just three years ago, we had a great economy and the strongest borders in our country's history. We had the best, strongest in our history. We were energy independent, soon to be dominant. We had no inflation. We had a rebuilt military. I rebuilt the entire military, United States military. We gave $80 billion. Think of it, brand new tanks and planes and goggles and 700,000 guns and rifles, 70,000. You make cars? Who has a used car lot with 70,000? And these are nobody. If you have 500 cars, they tell me that's a lot. You have 70,000. And these are armor plated in many cases. These cost millions of dollars apiece, many cases. We gave them 70,000. Do you know that Afghanistan is one of the largest sellers of weapons in the world right now? Can you believe it? They're selling all of this stuff that these guys just gave them. How stupid are we? How stupid are we to allow that? We were getting out. I was the one that got it down. We were going to keep Bagram, the air base, because it's right next to where China, forget about Afghanistan, where China makes their missiles, nuclear missiles. It's one hour away. We were going to keep that. They ran from it. They ran from it. They left it. They left the lights on. They left the dogs, by the way, for those people that like the dogs. It's a big question. They left the dogs. But we were going to keep that. We were going to do a job. And we were going to be out. We were getting out with, strict, with real dignity and strength. We weren't going to lose those 13 incredible souls that 
I met the parents and family the other night. They're, they're incredible people. They're so devastated. They don't talk about the 38 people that were literally no arms, no legs, Fla the faces blown to pieces, and the hundreds of other people that died. All unnecessarily wouldn't have happened. You know, I spoke to Abdul, the head of the Taliban. We had a rough conversation. I said, listen, Abdul, don't kill any of our people anymore. You kill any of our people, we're going to hit you harder than anybody's ever been hit. And he said, but why, but why do you send me a picture of my home? I said, you'll have to figure that out. You'll have to figure that one out. You're going to have to figure that one out. But you know what? After that, for 18 months, not one soldier was killed in our country. They were sniping him and killing him. And he's still there. He's in charge. Can you imagine the feeling when they said, Abdul, Abdul, the Americans have left. The soldiers are gone. He said, no, 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 they would never do that. Only stupid people would do that. No, no, the soldiers have gone. Before we took the equipment, before we took our people out, we have hundreds of people, maybe thousands, but we have hundreds of people that are American citizens that are still there. We took the soldiers out first. That was the problem. And they should have used Bagram as their place because you had a tremendous area. It wouldn't have been that disaster that you witnessed with the planes going up. Remember when Biden said, we'll never have a Vietnam with the helicopters going up? Well, this was worse. This was a plane going up with people hanging all over the plane and falling from 3,000 feet in the sky. That's three times the height of the Empire State Building, by the way. Russia was not going into Ukraine. China was not going into Taiwan. We had our enemies in full retreat. They respected us all over the world. We were respected. Now we're left out as a country. And now we're coming back to do it all over again. And I promise you this, with me as your president, our opponents will lose and our American workers will be the biggest winner of them all. So with your help and with your vote, we will expel the globalists from our government. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. We will put America and our workers first. We're going to put them first. And we will do something that's very, very special that I've been saying for a long time, and we had it going at a level that nobody ever thought possible. We will make America great again. So thank you. God bless you, Michigan. And God bless you, auto workers. And God bless America. God bless everybody in this room. Thank you all very much. So nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So there you have it. Former President Donald Trump uh, making his re-election pitch there in Michigan tonight. Uh, you heard him talk about the UAW strike, talk about electric vehicle manufacturing as well. Now, remember, he won Michigan once. Back in 2016, he lost Michigan last cycle in 2020. He wants to be president again, and he wants the UAW's endorsement. Uh, he said that several times. He says Sean Fain, the UAW president, needs to endorse. He called Fain a good guy. He says, get your union leaders to endorse me. It's as explicit as you can get there. Uh, we have another shot there. Let's take that live of Trump there greeting some of his supporters. You see some of the signs there. Auto workers for Trump, union members for Trump. Now, this is Macomb County. Uh, this is Trump country uh, in a state that has trended and gone solidly blue, especially back last year when the midterms. So the state legislature in Michigan, the governor's mansion in Michigan, all solidly blue right now. That was the first time in 50 years. But if Trump is the nominee, he wants to win it back. And that was the pitch tonight. Uh, so obviously split screen, you have the second RNC GOP primary debate airing right now on the Fox Business Network and the Fox News Channel, of course, not here on Live Now. Uh, but Trump mentioned it very briefly. I don't know if you caught that. He said it's a jobs debate, kind of a tongue-in-cheek notion that uh, he thinks those contenders on the debate stage tonight will eventually work for him in a second Trump administration. Uh, that's kind of what he was alluding to there. All right, we're going to 
Step away from this shot. I'm Andrew Kraft. Thanks so much for being with us here on Live Now from Fox. Um, but time and time again, you heard Donald Trump there go after electric vehicles. Now, he kind of hedged a bit. He said, you know, he didn't completely hate electric vehicles, um, but he wasn't that favorable to them. He said the Biden administration is forcing consumers to go all electric there. Uh, and so that is one of the main contentions uh, and the main sticking points in these UAW negotiations. Now, remember, it takes less people to assemble an electric car. Uh, an electric car has less parts uh, than uh, a car with an internal combustion engine. You heard there, he said, the Biden administration wants to get rid of the internal combustion engine altogether. That was a big applause line. Um, but you heard him talk about key international topics, domestic issues like the economy, like the border, like immigration there. Back out live as well uh, to the shot. Well, we just lost the shot, actually. So I think that's the news out of this, uh, this speech tonight uh, to the UAW, some of the UAW workers there that are solidly in Trump's camp. He wants their endorsement. He wants Sean Fain's endorsement. Now we know, though, that Sean Fain uh, will not be meeting with former President Donald Trump while he is in Michigan there. Uh, of course, this was the scene uh, earlier. Okay, so Trump was getting a tour of Drake Enterprises. It's a non-union factory there in Macomb County in Clinton Township, and that was the scene. He was getting the tour from some of the uh, plant and factory owners uh, that go back generations. This is a family-owned plant there. Okay, so interesting enough, Walt Biden has not got the UAW endorsement yet either. Of course, Biden was on the picket line just yesterday there, very near to where this is in Wayne County, outside that Ford Assembly plant in Michigan. So you have all of these things happening at once. Uh, and speaking of President Biden, the motorcade is en route there on the tarmac in California. Let's take that live. Okay, so uh, this is somewhat working out quite well here. You have yet another split screen. It's almost a tri screen. You got the debate going on there in California where Biden is. Biden is right there in the beast, going to get on Air Force One. He will travel to Arizona. He'll be in Arizona tomorrow speaking at the McCain Institute uh, about particular threats to democracy. It's a theme he talks about a lot. And then, of course, Trump just wrapped up his comments there in Michigan as well. Um, so you can see President Biden there in the back. He was attending some fundraisers tonight in the Bay Area, um, one that might interest you. He was at the home of billionaire Tom Steyer and his wife. Now, you'll remember Tom Steyer ran against then-candidate Biden in the 2020 Democratic primary. Uh, but now, Biden's former opponent holding and hosting a fundraiser for him. So Biden's going to be walking up the stairs there.